Welcome to the Tuesday DC Today. It kind of feels like a Fed day, even though it wasn't uh, a Fed day in the sense of the FOMC meeting, the Federal Open Market Committee. There was no rate announcement and there was no official press conference around rate policy. But uh, because Jerome Powell gave a speech today and a number of other Fed governors are getting their moments of fame, um, and then you had a lot of market volatility around uh, intraday Fed talk, it felt like a Fed day. So bottom line today, and I'm going to go kind of quickly for you, um, the, mar- the Dow ended up being up 266 points, and that amounts to a 0.78% return up on the Dow. Um, and I'm going to caveat that in a moment, but the S&P was up 1.29% and the NASDAQ up 1.9%. So you had a pretty substantial move higher across all risk assets, particularly these equity market indices. But the Dow was floating around up uh, you know, a few points, kind of flattish. And then it skyrocketed up 260 within minutes of Jerome Powell talking. And then it dropped to down a couple hundred points. And then it went uh, higher nonstop for the remaining two hours, uh, two and a half hours of trading to close up 265. So the point I'm making is that you got a four or 500 point swing in a few minutes up for really no reason, down for really no reason, continuing on forward. And when I say no reason, I mean no fundamental reason, but uh, technically there was a reason, which, which is the... Um, removal of those shorts that had come into today, uh, you know, believing there was a possibility of hawkish talk from j which I would, you know, I don't really believe in making my living or putting my clients' outcomes in the hands of these kind of minute-by-minute or hour-by-hour bets. But if I was forced to have made one, I probably would have been on offsides on that too, that there was a you know reasonably good chance that Powell was going to flex a little today with some hawkish talk, and he really didn't. Um, you did have Bostic, who's the Atlanta Fed governor, talking about they need to be higher for longer. Neil Kashkari never misses a chance to get in the newspaper. And uh, the Minnesota Fed governor, who I want to point out is not a voting member of the FOMC, and he definitely never misses a chance to to talk about how hawkish he wants to be. So you had a little bit of a tone from other Fed governors that things needed to be tighter. And I could have seen Jay Powell, particularly after the way the market responded to him last week, coming in with the same. But the bottom line is, as we closed out and I got ready to hit save and come record for you, the Fed funds futures are right now pricing in a 91% chance of a quarter point rate hike at the next uh, FOMC meeting next month. And that would bring them up to 4.75. And then there is a 70% chance priced in of another quarter point after that, which brings them to five. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, futures action pricing, no hike at the second meeting. And, and there's a little pricing in more than that. But, you know, you're really close to the market, almost uh, perfectly aligning around a 5% terminal rate. So that's what happened in the market today. Bond yields have continued to move. I should point out, though, the inversion has just gotten worse uh, because the 10-year is only up 29 basis points from where it was a week ago, whereas the uh, short end of the curve, I'm using the two-year, is up 37 basis points. It's a pretty big move. I think that's something in the range of the low fours to four, four, five or so. Um, You know, I can tell you exactly. Um... Let's see here. Yeah, four four seven percent on the two year, and that and that like I said, that represents since last week a thirty seven basis point move. It was at about you know four ten before. Um, the trade deficit uh, came in for the month of December. There's always a, a good four to five week lag for trade computation. Um, it came in at sixty seven point four billion, which is a little less than expected. And uh, exports for the whole year last year were up 7.6%, where imports were up 2.2%. So that um, delta is largely because of energy. We were exporting a fair amount last year, more than expected. And I would point out, too, that um, that you did have a, to- a decline in total trade in the fourth quarter. Uh, imports plus exports, which is by far my favorite metric. 
uh, was down 2.5% in the fourth quarter and 1.1% in the third quarter. So what that meant was full year total trade was up 4.4% um, coming backwards in the second half of the year. Um, what else? Read the Ask David in the uh, DC Today for someone wanting to know why we talk about S&P earnings, not Dow earnings, even though we prefer the Dow as a price metric. And I think my answer is multifaceted and hopefully um, thorough. Energy was the leading performer today, up over 3%. It was kind of due. Consumer staples were the worst performer, but they were only down 0.36%. Oil was up 4.5%. Uh, that was this, the day in the markets. That was the day with Jay Powell. You have President Biden's State of the Union address tonight. What else do you have going on? Uh, clients get their weekly portfolio holdings report tomorrow morning. And that's all I have to say. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Thanks for reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.